So, okay guys, we're shifting gears, we're shifting gears. And I think we're gonna... I think... I just, I just have to, I have to. It's been... I've been wanting to build one of these for a long time. A really big boy kit of one of these. So I think we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna start. Machining Krieger 44 type, MK44 Ammo Knights, smart gun equipment type. Um, yeah, I got this like two weeks ago at the hobby store. They had like a, a ding and dents sale. You guys can see that the box is a little dinged up. So they couldn't sell this uh, online anymore, right? So in store, they just had a number of kits like this. And this is the only one I bought, but now I'm kind of thinking I should have got more more ding and dense kits because uh, it's like a good deal I got a good deal on it and everything is good on the inside there's the uh, yeah there's the uh, there's it does come with a, a dude and this big chonky boy and yeah let's get into it um, just because I'm excited and I think it might be fun and we'll see oh my God! <laughs> there you go there's a thank you, Joe, for the for the redeem. We've we've had a, we've had a, a a period of time just now with a number of very odd sound effects. It was wild. It was wild and woolly. <laughs> Eddie, the liquid mask worked, but I pulled it too early. Time to strip paint. Oh wait. So, so what happened? It worked, but it didn't work? What happened? <laughs> Joe, are you stripping now? Stripping? Give it up for, give it up, give it up for Jose. <laughs> Jose, Eddie. Give it up for Candy. All right, all right, guys. Let's familiarize ourselves with the instructions real quick, if there's anything that I need to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. 1 in 20th scale. Eddie, it worked, but there was paint still drying attached to it, and it made it uneven. Oh, so you really have to wait, huh? It's one of those things where you just have to, like, give it a lot of, a, a good amount of time to cook. To dry. Damn. Did, was, is it, like, a lot? Did a lot of it come off? And you have to strip, like, the whole entire project? Because that would be not good. That would be no bueno. So, this is a 1 in 20th scale model. And... One thing that I just find very, very interesting about it is this is how big the human is. This is how big the human pilot is going to be relative to the to the armor, the armored suit. And my understanding is that the that these models they are slightly bigger than maybe an HG. Uh, much chunkier, but I find that very interesting. Okay. Uh, should have given it six hours, just a part? Okay, okay, it's just a part. It's gonna repaint the forearms. Okay, okay. Six hours is a lot, though, and I know you're kind of, like, under the gun. You're kind of, like, working with a bit of a time constraint, so... So, yeah, there is this feeling like you gotta get stuff done. But yeah, six hours. I always try to kind of like just be very careful with the timing and maybe even give things more time than the than the, the label recommends. But I mean sometimes you just don't have the time. Okay, I've got my instructions just ready right there. Let's start guys. I'm I'm very excited to get into this. I know that <laughs> I've said that a number of times. This is a very unusual model. It's very different from what you guys are probably normally used to. But at the same time, at the end of the day, 
It's a, it's a model kit. It's no biggie. Uh, E1. Have to be done by Wednesday. Done by Wednesday and enter by Saturday. Okay. The, um, the previous competition that you entered, Eddie, was really cool. I loved seeing all the work that everyone had done uh, and submitted from your store. Just awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Really cool. And that, that actually kind of got my brain kind of like thinking along those lines. Like I was kind of, well, I was already kind of thinking like I'd like to enter a competition and work on some stuff. But seeing all of that was like, it really kind of reaffirmed this idea in my mind. Like I would, I would really like to kind of compete and, and try. Just try, you know? Sorry guys. I'm just trying to get this crap out of the bag. Snagged. Okay, I think we're good. It's fun to see if you're getting better or not. I think I think I think everyone's getting better. I think that's kind of like one of the great things about it. Mission skirt. Mission skirt. Right foot slippers tight. Type shape hover. Oh god. Left foot slippers shape hover. Oh my god, these instructions. Ooh. I'm not sure if I'm loving the uh, the English here, but we're gonna make it. We're gonna try our best, and we're gonna take our time too. So uh, yeah, probably not gonna have a lot of progress done, but we're, we're gonna we're gonna just take our time and see. See, I'm already finding something kind of odd. It's saying E2. Uh, okay, okay. Well, we'll try, we'll try. Seems like the foot construction is more or less the same, except for, like, one or two parts, which will then become the left or right foot. So again, we're just gonna be very, very careful about this. I've never built uh, a model kit from this range before. I have built a Hasegawa model kit before. The... The vending machine, um, and I did find that the build was was okay. Maybe not amazing. So again, we're just going to be very careful. Mission steer. Eddie, I use comps as checkpoints for gunpla. Okay, so like you're saying, like it's kind of just this. It's a way of like marking your progress in the hobby, you know, and each one kind of represents uh, kind of like a milestone. I could, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I was talking it over with my brother, and, and, and yeah, he's, he's very keen on, on entering competitions as well. And we've been thinking about like just sort of building as much as we can throughout the year, throughout the year of 2023, right? And then by the time summer comes and, and there's some competitions, we can kind of assess what we've built and, and, and kind of decide at that point, like, okay, this is the model that we're gonna, we're gonna kind of push and, and take into the next level and, and work on, maybe? Eating, no problem, no problem, Joe. Busy guy, busy, busy. I think we're gonna change up the music real quick. Okay, we have cut these parts. Okay, let's get something different. Music. Uh, Eddie, I just want to beat my sensei in something. Ah, so the the student has surpassed the master kind of situation, huh? 
and then he'll acknowledge you. He'll be like, he'll have like, he'll be on the ground with a bloody nose, and he'll wipe, he'll wipe his nose, and he'll be like, like, so you've learned. You've learned. Actually, I think I've I've watched just recently one of your video one of the videos from your senpai because he has a YouTube channel, right? Uh I Iro I R O H if if I if I'm not mistaken. I think it was a video about uh hmm, spray painting your models. I like to watch videos about not just about advanced techniques, not just about things that I haven't done before, right? Like, like it's it's good to do that too to kind of like familiarize yourself with, with a with a new technique. Like I know Eddie was saying he was watching a video about about liquid masking. I definitely do that as well, but I also actually really like watching videos about basic stuff that I I feel like I actually do understand and have a good grasp on just because I, I always feel like okay let's watch this guy's video and see if I if if they do something differently you know what I'm saying like like because we have these very kind of rigid notions about how or we're just very fixed about about certain processes about how how we go about doing things and then you know maybe if I watch a YouTube video and someone does something a little differently I can learn from that even though again it's a very basic task you know or it's it's a task that I feel like I I have a good handle on it's still just good to watch and and get a refresher and maybe see how other people do it <laughs> catch up on the chat Eddie, but I know once I beat him, I've finally hit that level I want to be at. Oh, cool. That's I like it. I like it. Living that anime life. Living and breathing it. You don't just watch it. You live it. Mm, yeah, he's one of them. The other one doesn't create content. You should peep his Insta. I may have seen his Instagram. I'm not sure. Um, he's a commission painter, but there's also another guy at the store that doesn't put his stuff on the internet. Oh, but I must, I may have seen uh, um, the other person that you're referring to, just because you've you've shown some work on while you while you're streaming from the store, right? And so maybe I've seen the other person as well. Mm-hmm. Carmi, gonna finish up work, so I'll be going. Have a good one. No problem, Carmi. Thank you for stopping by. And again, thank you for the for the laughs. Always good, always good for a couple of laughs. That Carmi, oh that Carmi. If if you were if you had a sitcom, Carmi, you may be gone right now. But if you had a sitcom, it would be called Oh that Carmi, or That's so Carmi. <laughs> That's so Carmi. <laughs> um. Eddie, but he's better than Iroh. He's better. He's better. So he's like the super senpai. Uh, he has the stuff at the store. Okay, 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 okay. So that's the one that you want to surpass. You want to surpass uh, uh, the other senpai. I think, if I'm understanding correctly. Cool, man. I mean, how's the how is the the relationship there between you and your senpai? Is it is it like a friendly one? Is it a good one? Like where like they can they teach you things, and it's really cool, or are they like kind of cagey about about their about what they do and their techniques and stuff? I, I have no idea. I'm just asking. That's so Carmi. Welcome to another episode. Last time on That's So Carmi. You know, whenever like a, whenever like a, a character like walks in through the door on Married with Children, there's like all this laughter, the laugh tracks and the and the cheers. That's like when Carmi comes into the stream. In my mind, that's what it's like. It's like a sitcom, and and then once Carmi enters, once uh, once Eddie enters, once anyone enters, it's like it's like there's applause. It's like hey, yeah, yeah, Kelly. Just like when Kelly. Kelly would come 
uh, down the stairs. And he's like, yeah, Kelly. Eddie, I hold down the store, and they check up on what I'm doing. Teach me about pro Nice, nice. Basically tips and tricks, but I have to try... I have to try an application to sell items. Oh, right, right, right. You were talking about that um, in your stream, how, like, it's just a good... It's just good to... To learn about the products that that your store is selling so that you can speak from experience that's that's pretty cool man that's actually that's just like employee of the month uh, uh techniques you know what i'm saying i don't know if if your store does that but if they did they would have eddie's face just like every single month eddie's face and you know sometimes he's like a, a sloth sometimes he's like an eggplant you know, just to just to shake it up so it's not just like Eddie. Sometimes he's a, a Pixar character. Do you know that Pixar? <laughs> Epo not showing his age. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Freaking married with children. Married with children. Roseanne. Oh, what am I gonna re refer to? Uh, Big Bang Theory. Oh uh, yeah, Big Bang Theory. You guys remember Big Bang Theory? No. Watch that. Married with children. Watch Roseanne because I had nothing to do as a kid and it was depressing. <laughs> do you know that, that Pixar filter uh, that you have, Eddie? I Every time I look at it, you look like Vlad from Hotel Transylvania. Has, that, has anyone ever told you that? Has anyone ever told you that you look like Vla Vlad from Hotel Transylvania? <laughs> It's it's like it's it's utterly distracting. I'm like, hold up, hold up. Why is why is Adam Sandler building gunpla? Someone said I look like Tadashi from Big Hero Six. Yeah, I did catch that. I did see that one, but but I'm like, dude, no. Vlad, blah blah blah. Yeah, next time you stream, Eddie, just just put that filter on, and for me, just go blah blah blah. <laughs> Sometimes when I build models on stream, I tend to kind of rush a little bit when it comes to the the processing of the parts when it comes to the the sanding and I'm like I'll do it later I'll do it later but this time I want to I want to kind of do it a little give it a little bit more time and attention because uh, it'll save me time later and uh, you know it's no big deal we're just we're all just kind of hanging out today not in a big rush and once I finish assembling this model I'm going to uh, probably not paint it immediately because uh, um, there's there's a number of other projects that I have going on that I feel like I, w I want to kind of work on first but you know you never know we'll see I might be just far too excited and, and I'll, I, I'll want to move on to this just remind me if I forget Eddie okay okay I will blah 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 Shoutouts to Hotel Transylvania, a cartoon which which uh, doesn't need any shouting out at all. But I really enjoy the director. So the director of um, I'm gonna drop some Western cartoon knowledge on you guys. You guys are all weeaboos. You guys all know about anime, uh, but I also like Western animation. I might be a Westaboo. <laughs> um, the animator and director for Hotel Transylvania, his name is Gennady Tartakovsky, and he, he created Dexter's Laboratory, which I really, really enjoyed as a kid, but more famously, he also, or maybe perhaps more pertinent to, to us, he also directed and created the series Samurai Jack, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Is that a term, Westaboo? I feel like I've heard it before, but maybe it's just because 
uh, within my circle of friends, we've we've uh, <laughs> we've uh, we've exchanged that that term. I I feel like uh, I mean, there's definitely people out there in Japan that enjoy Western cartoons and stuff, but they they likely don't call themselves Westaboos. <laughs> but yeah, Samurai Jack, if you guys haven't seen it, fantastic show. And uh, and yeah, he did uh, Hotel Transylvania and continues to do Hotel Transylvania, sort of like his bread and butter these days. Although I have to say, sadly, ooh, I see, there's a difference. Oh, say what? Hold up. Oh. Okay, I understand now. The left and right differential here. The difference. So yeah, the construction is all the same. All these parts are numbered the same, except when it comes to this inner part. There's sort of like this peg situation, and depending on how you put that in within the inner part of this foot, it'll become the left foot or the right foot. Holy shit. Ooh, I feel like I could make a mistake anytime, guys. But sadly, with Gen with Gennady Tartakovsky, uh, uh, he's had trouble getting movies off the ground. Um, he's such a talented uh, director and animator, and yet um, a number of very promising projects would would get announced, and yet they would never really get much farther than that in terms of production. They really wouldn't uh, uh, see the light of day, and so. A very long time ago, possibly 12 years ago, he was supposed to direct a Astro Boy movie, which would have been killer, which would have been so cool, but sadly it just fell through, and an Astro Boy animated movie did come out, but no one talks about it. It's I, I haven't seen it. It's probably not that great. And again, the same situation happened with, uh, with Popeye. He was supposed to direct a Popeye animated movie. And they even got so far as to create like this test animation for Popeye, which you can find on YouTube. Just type in like Gennady Tartakovsky, which I'm, I mean, I, I don't even know how to spell it, guys. Just just figure it out. Autocorrect will help you. Uh, Gennady Tartakovsky, uh, Popeye, and there's this uh, animated short, which is just really really great showcasing what it would have been like but alas alas it never came to life it never it never came out so so we're out of luck we're shit out of luck it's also astro boy was decent oh really the animated movie i haven't seen it i mean i i watched the uh, hey dating myself again guys i've watched the uh the old cartoons and I thought those were amazing. I used to stay up really, really early, wake up super early in the morning before school and watch that. But yeah, I I have not seen that new movie. But I didn't know he made all that. Yeah, and he's done an, he's, he's worked on a number of other things since then. I think there was this show called Primal, which I have not seen. Okay. There's an exclamation point. What does that mean? Mm, be careful here. Do not cement. Too needed. You can paint adhesion and PC components. Open hole. Holy shit. I have to open holes. Uh -huh. Oh god. Remove. Remove. What? Optional, apply decal, okay. Okay, so there's definitely some parts that seem like it's gonna have to require glue, but they don't even tell you. It's just, it's seemingly, they seemingly just assume that you will glue it. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is not do that right now, because I'm just so scared of f fucking this up. <laughs> I'm so scared of messing this up in an ir irreversible way. So we'll just, I'm just gonna place this stuff very carefully, and uh, oh, and we'll see. And once I get a, a bit more confidence, 
in this build once I kind of get used to the ins and outs of how it's all gonna go down yeah look yeah see this there's no peg no peg hey peg hey peg there you go gonna go something like that. Hey pig. Ow. Say what? Okay. Okay. Yes. So that is that is that is that. I do need to glue that. I do need to cement that, but we'll let that we'll just let that chill for a minute while we kind of work on some other parts and again just kind of familiarize ourselves with this process here with the with the feeling and the flow of of how this build works because i'm scared i'm so scared guys uh pc3p okay how many of these p parts are we needing two we do have some poly caps not too fond of poly caps, but hey, it's all right. Poly caps, PC three C. Mhm. Mm and how many of those? Just one. Very well. Okay. This is this is also going to be a build that I'll probably work on for for an extended period of time. I'll probably work on it off stream and on stream. But yeah, we'll we'll take our time on this. Sometimes with polycaps, I I like to leave a bit of extra material to just ensure that that there's a there's a bit more friction although although that might affect the fit on some parts um, it's worse if you take off too much too much material that's what I found uh, when I was building the 30 minute missions model I may have removed too much material from some of the polycaps and then and then the fit with inside the the socket of the of the leg or the hips or the arms would be too loose and that's no good. Okay. I actually haven't taken a break. I have not took a break, but we'll continue. I'm just having, I'm just too excited, guys. So let's just, just carry on for now. And then we'll take a break a little later. Uh, E6 and E4. Okay, here's four. Eddie, uh, gonna get ready for work? Have a good stream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for stopping by, Eddie, of course. You're, you're always welcome here and I always enjoy hanging out and I'll definitely catch you in one of your streams good day at work I'm looking forward to the progress on your on your model on your build I think you're gonna get it done in time I think you're gonna do it I have confidence Okay, and I think we need two of these parts. Oh yeah, it's telling me do it twice. Do it twice. Do it again. Anytime they uh, they tell me to do it twice, I, it, it always trips me up just because I never notice it. And so I'll just work on the one piece. It takes a, it takes a good long while. And then I check the instructions and then they're like, do it again. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, I see uh, Urban has uh, followed me on Instagram. Yeah, let's, uh, let's leave a little comment. Pardon me, guys. Maybe I'll take a little break right now. It's a good time to take a little break. Yeah, let's do that. All right, guys. Let's get some different music for you. Let's get some break music. It's good break music. Here you go. Let's get some Castlevania. Actually, no. I haven't listened to this in a good while. It's good stuff. Let's play this. It's an RPG that I've never played myself, but I just love the soundtrack from. Okay, break time, guys. I'll catch you in like five. Give me five to six to eight. Right? All right. Oh, it's Jose. <laughs> it's Jose. I'm going on a little break, all right? So just hang tight, hang tight. <laughs>
All right, I'm back, I'm back. What's up, everyone? Back from my little break. I uh, tended to the call of nature. I see Jose is here. Jose made his presence known, and then I was like, I'm taking a break, goodbye. But if you're still here, Jose, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming by, I appreciate it. Um, earlier today, we worked on some miniatures. Uh, I was painting this this mimic from Dungeons and Dragons, as well as this berserker lady, this half-naked berserker lady from Dark Souls. So we were doing some miniatures, but right now I am working on a machine and creator model kit. You have heard me talk about these models in the past, and I built some smaller gotcha versions of the models, one in 35th scale, and now I am working on a 1 in 20th scale uh, machine and Krieger model. Shit, that was the bottom? Hold on. I want to show you the, the box. I want to show you my box. Blah. Yeah, this is the box route. Machining Krieger 44 type, MK 44 Ammo Knight, smart gun equipment type. I love the uh, I love the art on the box. I love that it's like this watercolor painting. Um, this is this this illustration is from the designer of the kits and the creator of the of the setting as well. Uh, Ko? Ko Yokoyama? I was saying Kao Yokoyama, but I think it's Ko Yokoyama. Um, yeah, and this is the first time that I've painted a model, or rather built a, a large-scale proper machine and Krieger kit, because before I had just built the smaller the smaller ones, as I was saying. So I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to working on this. And yeah, this is going to be one of those long-term kind of builds. We're going to chill. We're going to take our time and and try and do this as nicely as we can. And then we're going to all mess it up and make it look dirty and busted up by the time it comes to painting it. We'll, we'll be very clean about, about the build, but when it comes to painting, we're going to be very very chaotic. Well, I don't want to say that, but I want to I want to make it look dirty and grungy. It's sort of my favorite model aesthetic as of late. Um, I I enjoy the clean builds. I like I like looking at at the model kits that look clean and slick and straight out the the car factory. But I really do love I really, really do love the dirty, the down and dirty model kits that are just, just weathered to shit. <laughs> oh, although that's not entirely true because I think that there's, there is a kind of method to the, to weathering and it's very easy to, for it to kind of go south and kind of take it too far. And there's, there's a number of examples of that, that you can just find where, where, you know, everyone has the best intentions but when it comes to like the application of weathering less is more and 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 having a more reserved approach to it just just it it, do, it does a lot of work a little goes a long way is probably the best way to put it but the, the problem is, is, is your own personal self-control in, in a lot of ways. Just because as a, as a hobbyist, as a builder, and, and as a painter, you're, you're applying the weathering. And I'm, apologies if you're hearing me. Uh, I have a, a Ricola in my mouth. In my mouth. As a builder... It's actually quite fun. It's quite fun to apply all, all of that weathering and, 
chips and scratches. And you're like, I'm having fun, and it looks really awesome. I'm gonna do more. And you're like, yeah, 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 this looks really good. Let's add more. And then you just keep on going, and then you, you don't even realize that it's happening right in front of your eyes, that you've gone, f just gone too far. And, and yeah, that's definitely happened to me it, with almost every single project that I've done where I've used weathering, I'm kind of like, ooh, ooh, did I just, did I just do too much? I very well might have done too much. <laughs> and you can, you can kind of try and take it back. It's not a big deal, right? But yeah, less is more. And the other thing, and I've talked about this before, is always being mindful of the scale, the scale of of your weathering relative to the scale of the model, right? Because the way in which you would weather a 1 in 35th scale model uh, would be different from the way you'd weather a 1 in 100th scale model or a Warhammer model. You have to kind of keep those things in mind. It's something that I think about quite a lot, which is sounds like I'm the most boring person on planet Earth. <laughs> But I do think about that with regards to how people weather, how I should weather. Okay, enough of that. Let's put this in. Mm -hmm. That goes in well. I wonder if I should glue this stuff. I have no idea. I don't think I should. But again, we're going to just see how it all comes together, and then we'll decide. Uh, okay, the... Got to pay attention to the instructions here. Oh boy! I definitely wouldn't do this while while drunk. <laughs> um, when was it? Yeah, I was I was painting. I was painting and putting some decals onto a model on Canadian Thanksgiving, like after dinner. May have had a couple of uh, couple of beverages, and I was making all sorts of bad decisions. <laughs> and and once I realized it, I was like, "Oh, I probably am drunk. I shouldn't be doing this." This is another instance where I feel like having your wits about you would be a good idea. Let's try and use the. Let's try and use this. Okay. Okay. This is good. I think that's good. And then we press this down. Mm -hmm. No. This down. We're gonna have to do this twice. flush should this be that okay there's some give I'm just gonna have to see yeah it's not completely I think I may have put this the wrong way this one oh yeah I did I think hmm oh no I think it goes this way very tricky That's one of those things that I really appreciate about Bandai model kits. Bandai and Lego, they just are very, very good with their instructions and the build and the process. And it's just so clear as to how you're supposed to put the pieces, how you're supposed to orient them. They're very good at that. They've been doing it for a number of years. And uh, this is not from Bandai. This is a Hasegawa kit. And it's different. It's a little different. Not gonna lie. Okay, now I'm thinking I got it wrong. The orientation. Got it double wrong. Let's put that there. Oh, okay. Okay, I think that's it. Okay. 
think that's it, guys. And I'm the word is still out as far as as far as gluing these parts down. No idea, but we're gonna carry on. That seems to that seems to go on a lot nicer. To do this twice because it's a humanoid figure so it has mirrored parts okay you know to this day I still have yet to uh, to buy a master grade kit I'm I lately I've been looking into it I've been looking into what actually is out there um, at my local stores that I could actually try out. You know, I'm not really committed to anything at this point, and it's probably not a good idea to get something with so much already on the backlog, but, you know, you know, that's just how it is. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, it could be fun. I really don't know what's good out there, necessarily. Like... I'm I'm kind of more interested in getting Federation sorry, not Federation, Xeon so called baddies. Getting something from Xeon. But those kits seem to be older, at least some of the ones that uh I've seen at my local store, those ones tend to be a little older. And I wonder if that's going to hmm is that going to be a bad representative of the master grade building experience in 2022? Do you know what I mean? You know, if I get a model kit from a master grade model kit that was made in like 1998 or or even the early 2000s, like 2000, it's 20 years ago, right? You know, certainly there's been many improvements to the to the process of making these things such that it might not be a good representative of the representation of the build experience and so many so many kits master grade kits are are of the Gundam style Gun oh, Gung <laughs> Gundam style so much of them are um, you know like the whole with the white and the and the faceplate and all of that stuff, and uh, I like the bad guys, the so-called bad guys. Okay, I think I gotta use tweezers for this. Oh yeah, purple. Just grab a PG Unleashed RX78. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just grab myself one of them perfect grades. Sure. <laughs> Or uh, MG Sazabi. MG Sazabi. I think Bacon built that not too long ago. That's a that was a big boy. That looked rather impressive. It's looking at like uh, you know like the uh, the goof. It's like maybe that. Okay, how's this go? Hmm. Is there a certain way? Hmm. Yeah. It's gonna go this way. I have to double check on the last one I put together. If I put it the right way. Yeah, but would you say, Purple, that some of these older MGs, do they still kind of hold up to the test of time? Or are they not that great? in 2022 purple get one of those good guy kits the good guy kids <laughs> yeah you're, they're usually red or green right yeah exactly <laughs> oh hello oh i've noticed something 
I've super, super put this in the wrong spot. Wow, I'm not even drunk. And I'm already making big boy mistakes. And that's exactly why I'm not going to glue anything right now. I want to really, really look at these instructions carefully and make sure that I'm doing it right. That's exactly why. No glue. It's dry fit. No pegs. You know, when I initially uh, picked up this model and I was looking through it, I was looking through it on stream, I was talking about how um, many of these kits don't have pegs. There's no, there's no like, uh, uh, interlocking system uh, simply with pegs and all of that, like a Gunpla. And then I was looking at the kit more. And I was like, oh yeah, actually I do I do see pegs, so maybe it's actually gonna be not so bad. Maybe it'll it's it's not gonna be all that different after all, right? And I I've had uh, a couple of uh, machine and Krieger heads, you know, some some people that are have been more familiar with these kits come in and 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 talk about how yeah 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 it's 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 uh you know it's not that bad compared to other model kits. It's not really that different after all. So I was like, okay, okay, but, but doing this now and realizing that actually, yeah, you do have to glue these parts. Actually, yes, they do require some glue. I'm like, dang, damn. Well, we'll take it slow. Purple, some of the older ones are a little bit simple, but still a fun build process. Okay, yeah. I just, I just feel like, um, well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about it, but I, I want to get something that's representative of the modern building experience in, in 2022, you know. But at the same time, I don't want to get one of them fetties. <laughs> uh, D15. I'm, I'm really interested in building the pilot, so um, I'm going to continue building this. Uh, but at a certain point, I might just kind of skip ahead and get to the get to the pilot. Some of the old MG kits will use a few screws in the joints. Interesting. Yeah, I have a um, I have a couple of um, what do they call them? no grade kits they're just so ancient that they have no grade at all <laughs> and yeah they yeah in both cases they do require uh, screws because um, I was looking through some of my old old kits that are kind of like been in storage and I thought I thought, hey, let's uh, let's let's bring this out and kind of restore it. Let's work on it and kind of like, you know, any address any parts that need to be fixed or is missing, and and I can repair it and all of that. And I was going through that. I was looking at the um, the Jag Doga actually. But the more I the more I was working on it, the more I was like sorting out through the pieces and looking that I needed to. When I needed to fix and replace, I was like, oh god, I don't actually want to do this. <laughs> it's just an unpleasant experience. All these parts are so... The model is like, even though it had been in a box, it, it felt weirdly dusty and old. I was like, ugh. Forget it. I'm just going to get a new Jag Doga at some point. That was like one of my first model kits. The Jag Doga. And I loved it. I thought it was so cool. Uh, purple, Sazabi, Sinanju, maybe the three point out, Grumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Part of the reason why I was looking at them, um, at at ma master grades in general, uh, last night was because I, I I remembered from your stream, you're building that one and it looked so cool, it looked so great. I was like, wow, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. Um, yeah, th I've had a, a a number of people ask me if I've if I've ever built a, a master grade and and if and when I ever get around to it it's gonna be uh, 
uh, a really great experience. It's going to be really good. Game changer. It's going to be really cool. So I was like, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. We'll get to it. Okay. Oh, I see. And I think if we orient them this way, that might be a little better. Hmm. I like it. Ooh. Uh, would be good, or the new Dom, or the Stormbringer. Okay, let me look up the Stormbringer. I don't think I've heard of that one. Yeah, the 3.0, I, I did look into that and try and see if it was going to be available at any of my local stores, and I, I don't think so, although some of them, they have it on pre-order. Like, you're going to be able to get it soon. Let's just do a loose fitting here. Got the feats. The feats. Big, flat feet. Oh, interesting. There's a lot of detail here that actually you don't even really get to see. Let's put that there. Stormbringer. Uh, purple, the 3.0 I am I am building is a lot like a large size real grade. Okay. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? People are kind of split on their opinions of real grades. I've, I've actually been looking into those too, like, kind of, again, coming back to this hobby after a good long while, I had never even heard or seen of such things as real grades, so I was like, oh, these look really cool, they're detailed, and they have, um, they're at like a really good size where they're not going to take up too much space, so I was looking at them, and, and yeah, I've, it, just, just from chit chat, people on streams, and, and looking at people talking about them on YouTube, it does seem like some folks out there are not too fond of them. Purple has a ton of detail and color separation. Yeah, I, I did notice that when you, uh, with your build there. There's like, you know, on, on another kit for Gramps, what would have been simply just like the, the off the off color white or something actually would then have multiple shades of of grays and whites for different parts. Oh, okay, I'm looking at this Stormbringer. That does look really cool. Hmm. That does look pretty neat. B6. B6. A. C. L. B. Here we are. So we're going to have to keep in mind the left leg and the right leg. And I've actually sort of lost track of what's the left leg and the right leg. <laughs> Maybe what I should do is, is mark it on the model itself, because if I just put it in marker, I'll sort of remember it. The way to, under ooh, the way to understand if it's the right leg or the left leg is if you look at this part here there's these pegs and then this this sort of plate that goes on top okay so this is the right foot let me mark this down with a uh, with something so I can remember uh, hmm, don't I have a okay let's use that so right foot 
this marker here on all the parts. And this will come off pretty easy anyways, no big deal. This is this doesn't matter. But choosing an MG to build if you want to do customization, I would not get the 3.0 that I'm building. Oh. Because it's just like is there's just like too much involved, maybe? This these parts are mirrored, they're exactly the same, but we'll mark this with R. And then we'll, this one here is going to be left by process of elimination. Just uh, left, 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 and left. I think it goes this way, yeah. Very tempted to glue at least this little piece on, but we'll leave it for now. There we go. And I also have to keep in mind sub-assemblies. What parts am I going to um, leave unattached for the purposes of painting? I have to all keep that in mind. Purple has so much detail and separation. If you do custom painting, describing, uh, uh, scribing, and plot plating, you'll be at the point where you're making it too visually busy. Right, right, right. It's almost like there's no need just because it has so much detail already that you don't have to go in and, and do all that. I get you. Yeah. It's wild how that there's so many options out there. How much like detail for models that are, you know, there's even, there's even like this level, there's this grade right right below entry grade I forgot what they call it it has this name that doesn't really feel instructive it doesn't have the it has a name that doesn't really feel descriptive for what it is which is to say like a very very simple build even 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 far simpler than than an entry grade I forget what they call it but I was like holy crap I mean who is that for even at that point because you can just, I mean, an entry grade is like, is just so good. Like, even if you're someone that's been in it for, for a good long while, I feel like an entry grade is still, is still, a, is still a, a, a good and fun experience. Okay, I think it goes like this. Let's leave that alone. First grade, no color separation. Nah, it's something else. Like, I, I'm going to look into that later. I don't think they called it first grade. First grade sounds... See, that that would actually be a good name. That would be very sort of instructive. Assemble with order. Okay, so they're telling me I need to do this in a very particular order. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, one. Part one. Is a sub-assembly. B14. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I actually am very tempted to get a one of them old old model kits, possibly possibly like this first grade that you were talking about, because I've seen some builders on a uh, on YouTube, uh, Japanese builders, pick up those models and they look so simplistic, right? And they are old. They they look like for, they're from the 80s or something like that, and and there's very little articulation. They look mo almost more like like toys. I've seen some builders build them and paint them and kind of kind of really lean into the retro aesthetic and 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 some of them have even attempted to paint them like a uh, like the box art you know I've seen that and that actually looks pretty fun it actually looks pretty neat so I definitely you know again it's got so many ideas floating in my brain so many ideas out there how much will I actually get around to that's another thing entirely but I will say that ever since I started streaming, I've, I've, I feel like I've gotten a whole lot more productive within the hobby itself. 
you know, just because it's almost like a an accountability blog or vlog or something where it's like I say these things, I want to do these things, and like it's <laughs> you know like I'm streaming. There's I have an audience. I uh, you know so to speak, and so and so it kind of motivates me to get things done and not linger on anything for too long. I think prior to prior to streaming, and like I, I was talking about this before, but. You know, I, I still had my Instagram, I still had uh, Twitter and all that. And even long, long ago, I, I was quite active on, on Flickr. <laughs> you guys remember Flickr? Um, as a way of putting up my artwork or, or hobby stuff. But, you know, I would always just kind of, I, I would sometimes just languish on things. I would just, I'd have an idea, I want to work on something. And I'd just be like, eh, okay, I'll get around to it. We'll do it. We'll get around to it. We'll do it. But it would just take, it would just linger on forever, and then I'd lose interest, you know? And, uh, and yeah, it's like, it was kind of like bad in that sense. So ever since starting Twitch, yeah, I've been a whole lot more productive in, in terms of getting things done, and probably even like, uh, in terms of, of the scope of the projects and and attempting to do interesting things you know and trying out new things um yeah that's been great and, and whereas before i might have just thought like yeah 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 it'd be fun to do that that might be cool but then never get around to it carmy deviant art i actually do have a deviant art carmy i do indeed I'll leave it. Uh, I'll leave it for the internet detectives out there to find it. I don't even know what the account name was. It was probably something stupid, but I did have one. I probably didn't even post much artwork on there, to be honest. Yeah, I wasn't too fond of of using it and the interface for DeviantArt, but that place was the shit for for a good long time, right? That place was popping off. DeviantArt, holy shit. How about you, Carmi? Did you use DeviantArt? And what kind of art did you put up on there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did indeed. Yeah, I mean the name kind of implies like, like all sorts of like mm, questionable content, but it was fine. It wasn't actually. It wasn't actually that bad, right? It was fairly, fairly harmless. I haven't in touch. It's all taken down now. Oh, I should probably do that. Yeah. Yeah, for a while there, Flickr was really, really great. And in some respects, I kind of like Flickr a whole lot more than Instagram in terms of a place where you can post illustrations and photos and stuff. I think that at least for a while, because it's, it's garbage now, right? At least for a while, it was actually quite good. And, and as a place where you could like have an audience have a bit of a community going on it was it wasn't half bad for for a brief period of time but then it kind of went to shit i don't even know what it's like now I, it's still around in some form but yeah it's, it's probably kind of shitty now but yeah I, I even got some gigs out of out of Flickr. um you know because i would post up my artwork and then some galleries would get in contact with me to be a part of their show so yeah, there was a period of time where it was it was kind of good. It was good for, for business, I guess. It was a machine in Krieger Rule 34 alt account on DeviantArt. <laughs> Man, you don't even need like you don't even need to to look all that far to see to see something along those lines there. Uh purple like like again, it's one of those situations where uh at least, at, you know, not not for me in particular. Not yet, at least. Give me some time here. But um, 
but yeah there's there, it's out there man it's out there at least maybe not to the extreme of like full-on rule 34 but there's some like believe it or not there's some sexy machine and machine and krieger uh, uh builds out there and they kind of lean into it there's um there's a number of uh of figures and humanoid figures that you can get to put alongside your your armored suit with uh you know half-dressed ladies and i may or may not purchase one of those at some point in time a little smooth. I feel the nubbage. It's no nub November as as, a, as I've learned from Eddie and, and Jose. No nub November. It's good. I like it. I like it. It's wholesome. The, the quality of this plastic seems a little different from the from the one and the only other Hasegawa kit that I built, which is the the vending machine. I was kind of not loving the plastic, the feel of the quality of plastic on that. On that vending machine, it's from the same company, Hasegawa, but this feels a lot better. Uh, one way or another, it just kind of has a better feel to it. Polycaps, guys. There's quite a few polycaps with this model. I am not too fond of that TBH, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna gonna make it work. Let me look at this real close and see. Okay, some of these polycaps, some of these parts have like a beveled edge, and then. And then on the opposite opposite side, it has a sort of like right angled side. And the part that's facing up is the beveled edge in practically every instance. Deviant arts, man. Yeah, they're still around, but I don't know how popular deviant art is anymore. this in there okay good good and what else do we need got some more parts d19 d18 b okay i'm gonna need b13 let's get that out now so this part is not one of those situations where you do both sides at the same time. These parts are shaped specifically for the left leg and the right leg. B, yeah B, and now we need D. We need the D. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're at the three hour mark, which isn't too bad. That's uh, that's usually sort of like my, we're getting close to my max limit, but we'll carry on for a little longer. 19, okay, yeah. And then D18, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> purple eight hour stream I can't I, I I'm definitely not built I'm not built I'm built different I'm not built for that eight hour stream I will definitely lose focus like I'm already kind of making mild errors already 
it's been <laughs> you got this bud you can do it there bud you can do it one day one day yeah I've seen a number of uh, seen some streamers do eight hours seven hours I, f I follow a handful of, uh, of video game streamers too I mean I primarily watch uh, all of you guys really but but yeah, there's a couple of gamers that I also follow, like Majin Obama. I've been watching, um, I believe her name is Miss Mikasa. I think that's her name. She's a, like a, a Dark Souls streamer, uh, and she plays games on a dance pad. She recently finished Elden Ring level one, all on a dance pad, and now she's playing God of War. And, and yeah, uh, Majin Obama, th folks like that, they can stream for like six seven eight hours longer than that ten whatever and i'm like holy crap that is crazy i mean for me it's a matter of concentration as well like i can i can barely focus as it is <laughs> maybe that's just a me problem and then other folks have just really really good focus and they can sit down and, and have an entertaining stream and play competently that's the other thing too i feel like uh building these model kits it does take some focus it does take a bit of attention and painting too but i'm a little more accustomed to it i'm a little more a little more familiar with that and and i have streamed and played games before uh and i am used to that to some extent but even then like i lose focus i can I can't imagine how they can focus while playing games. It, it requires a lot more attention. And there's this idea on Twitch of being like, you know, it's it's a performance in some respects, right? I think we can say that. And this notion of, of being on stream and performing well, performing and playing a game competently, that's tough, it's tough. I mean, not everyone, not everyone seeks out to play games well. It's that's another thing entirely too to to be shitty at a game and stream it, and then everyone kind of loves to see people suck at a game too. Uh, but yeah, it's it's tough. Purple, I've done six as my max. Wow, 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 wow. That's a lot. Kudos to you, because I mean, like, yeah, I've been streaming for. I don't know how long has it been almost two years now i forget not not all that very long to be honest i feel like uh, i feel like i'm st still have a lot to learn still a baby and uh and for you to have like a six hour stream under your belt that's it's impressive it's impressive <laughs> That was two legs and the waist for the 3.0. Oh, so that was fairly recently then. The two legs and the waist. That that ended up being six hours. Wow. That's pretty cool though. That does sound fun in the sense that like a model could just, that model would demand that much out of you, demand that much time out of you. The, the, that thought alone is very appealing to me for some reason. I mean, I already spend a long time even just with something that would be the equivalent of a high grade, right? Like like the Witch Project, you know, it doesn't have a grade necessarily, but it would be something along the lines of a high grade or a, somewhere in between a high grade and an entry grade. And yet I, I took uh, all month long to build and customize that. So so the thought of working on a, even just a straight build of a, of a master grade like your 3.0, the thought of like taking a long long time like that 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 appeals to me <laughs> it was a bit rough not gonna lie right 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 did you take breaks though i mean you should take breaks right yeah i know bacon has gone on for long yeah pr practically everyone that we follow they they uh they can they can 
they're old vets. They're grizzled vets at it. They can, they can knock them out. They can do, they can do like four, five, six. I mean, there's other things I need to do in my day, <laughs> like eat <laughs> and sleep, family time. Um, even today, I'm probably going to get down to some drawing as well. As I've mentioned, I've been doing uh, Dinovember, drawing some dinosaurs all month long. We'll see if I can actually do every single day. I'm not, uh, I'm not committed to that, to be honest. Like... Uh, talked about this before, but when it comes to all of these monthly challenges, you know, who cares? Who cares? Who cares if I actually do it all month long? It's really, like, no one actually, no one actually is going to be, like, like, taking stock of that. Oh, you didn't finish it. You didn't finish your uh, Die November. You missed a few days. Like, you know, it's, you're better off just, if you need to take time, and I don't think anyone here is actually doing, uh, as far as I know, Possibly vanilla. Um, I don't think anyone else other than possibly vanilla is doing anything like a Dino November or something. So it's advice that's falling upon deaf ears. But yeah, just just take it easy. You don't have to. Oh, am I getting this wrong? Oh, it goes down like this. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. No biggie. Oh my gosh, yeah. Here's another part where there's no... That I'm gonna have to glue. Definitely gonna have to glue that. And I'm so tempted to do that now. Oh my god. I'm so tempted. Purple, it's about three hours for an HG kit, 12 for an MG. Took breaks to grab another beer. Right, right, right. Nice, nice. Gotta, gotta take those breaks. Um, yeah, when I came back to this hobby, and uh, and my sort of like my main hobby store, Trinity Hobby. Shout out to Trinity Hobby. I was telling uh, the owner and the and the the, sh the owner of the store, I was telling him how I'm working on Fumina, Super Fumina, which is a gift from Bacon many many years ago that I just kind of shoved in a closet <laughs> but I was like well if I'm coming back into this hobby I had, I had bought a couple of kits but I wasn't very confident in my ability to build uh, so I was like let's just work on this super fumina kit let's just try this thing out and and the trinity hobby guy was like oh yeah Oh yeah, that's gonna be about like 25 minutes. You can finish that in 25 minutes. <laughs> I was like, uh, it took me three days. <laughs> Ashwin, this is unrelated, but I was just going through a comic newsletter from Silver Snail, and apparently Paul Dano is the writer is writing his own Riddler mini series for DC. How do you feel about that, Ashwin? How do you feel about Paul Dano writing writing a comic book? I. I don't really have thoughts on that at all. So that's why I want to know your thoughts. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Is it a nothing thing? Paul Dano. I mean... You like his acting, correct? Holy shit. Who's the artist? See, maybe he should draw it too. That would be fun. I'm sure that would be a big disaster, but it would be amusing. Yeah, when celebrities, they sort of use their celebrity status to get into like writing comics and stuff. Because it's happened a handful of times, right? Even Keanu Reeves, I believe, has uh, started a comic or something like that. It's just like, whatever, dude. Like, it's. it's uh... It likely won't be anything memorable within the within the the, the greater canon of, of comics. Do you know what I'm saying? The greater sort of 
in the in the entire history of comic book storytelling it'll ultimately not really amount to much uh but you know whatever Paul Dano writing a comic. Oh, you'll sell a couple. He'll sell some copies, sure. DC seems to be f kind of like looking for looking for their in, looking for their opportunity to really, or trying to maximize their their opportunity here with with the Batman movie. It was, uh, you know. I mean, I think for a lot of us here, may not have been our favorite Batman movie, but it certainly made money, and they want to maximize their opportunity to make more money. And one way is to get Paul Dano to write a Riddler comic, apparently. Sure. Actually, when I'm like you, indifferent, but it's interesting. I suppose he is nerdy, question mark. On one hand, I like it when celebs genuinely care about their roles and the legacy they become a part of. On the other hand, yeah, whatever, you're a celeb. You're not writing it because you're good. Get good, get good. See, the real, the real strat for Paul Dano would have been to write the book under a... What's the term? Under a pseudonym. So that no one would know that it was Paul Dano. And then if it's good, it's like it's good on his own merits, not because he's Paul Dano. <laughs> but I don't know, he probably won't do that. And certainly DC is, is not interested in in doing that as well, because the whole point is is it's Paul Dano. Anyways. Now I'm looking for E5, E5, A, that's A, D, B, E, here we are. I really hope Patrick Stewart keeps his hands off the plot of Picard in Season 3. Oh, was he involved in, in the writing of, of Season 1 and 2? I, I have no idea. I did not know if that was the case or not. But I too would hope that he would uh, be hands off if that's the case. I, like I said, I don't know. Definitely more on top of those things. We are gonna finish this page. That's what I've decided. There's, I'm, I'm currently on the first page of this build, and we're gonna get to, we're gonna complete page one, page one, and then, uh, and then we're gonna wrap things up. it up. I did glue something guys. I, it's the first time I've actually committed to something here with this model. Committed to actually uh, uh, fi affixing something permanently. And here we are with this peg which is okay that went in. That went in pretty good. Okay okay okay. So this is the this is the right leg. Again let's write this down. Let's write all this down. Just to make sure, right and right. There we go. And now we got to do the same thing again, but now on the left leg. Yay! Super exciting. Ashwin, I mean, he was involved. He had terrible ideas, but truly, what was a factor in in Picard's stankness? <laughs> stankness. <clears throat> okay, so we got the tube, fun, flexible, inflatable tube guy, and now we need B11. So we are we are close. We're close to wrapping things up. We're just cutting out these pieces, and we're gonna put this part together. But I'll take my opportunity now to thank everyone for hanging out. You guys know, you guys know who you are. You guys know the drill. Thanks so much for hanging out with me while I do whatever it is I do. Paint, build, talk a bunch of crap, talk a bunch of nonsense, talk about No Nut November. <laughs> it's, a, it's a matter of just, just chatting and having fun and talking with you guys. That's all I ask for. Just messing around, joking around.
I'm not GGing out just yet there, Ashwin. As I said, I'm, 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 I'm still kind of going through these parts. But I'd like to kind of get ahead of my, my thank yous. Get ahead of my thank yous for the stream. That was the first time that I saw that you could use all these weird sound emotes on Bleep. I don't know if that's a new thing or not. This is the first time seeing that in action, and it was definitely an experience. Definitely, definitely bizarre. I was thinking, hmm, I might disable this for future reference, because <laughs> uh, it kind of distracting, but it was actually kind of funny. It turned out to be just a funny, chaotic moment on stream, and uh, and then it sort of dissipated, so that's fine. But I, I could foresee that, like, you know, I might be doing something very, very careful, very, very, like, you know, I have to focus in on something, and then suddenly I hear, like, you know, whatever that gnome thing was scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Sometimes my own sound alerts, not even the bleep things, but the or the blurp things, but um, like subscriptions or or, or follows or um, raids, even those sound effects scare the crap out of me. I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> so I mean, like uh, maybe I'm just a skittish person. Maybe it's a me thing. Actually, I still gotta set up my soundboard. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, there, bud. You'll get it going. Couldn't make it go. <laughs> the others are smart. They make it go. I I don't know how to do the accent, but yeah. <laughs> What's the name of those uh those aliens? When you when you mentioned that, or when you put it on your stream, I was like, is this is this like an offensive term? It sounds almost offensive. You know how just some words, the way they roll off the tongue sound offensive it was, it, almost, it was like that I was like is this a is this problematic it's actually being problematic but now it's just Star Wars yeah the pack lids doesn't that sound vaguely offensive pack lids <laughs> it does because it sounds like the racist term for Indian exactly right <laughs> it's Star Trek but you know it's Star Trek right so it makes it fine Jose, back sorry, back connection. Oh, 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 I'm sorry to hear that. I wonder if that was on my end, because I do notice sometimes I get a little bit of a, a hiccup on my on my stream, some drops and frames, but it kind of it kind of normalizes eventually. Nice to see you here, Jose. I took a break. You, you arrived, and I was like, hey, it's Jose. I'm taking a break. See ya. <laughs> and then I didn't see you for a while, so I was like, oh, did I piss off Jose? <laughs> but nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hopefully you got your... Your whole, sh your whole internet connection deal figured out. I I forgot to ask. How did your um, how did the 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 magical girl witch build turn out? Because you were working on Gal Gygar the last time I saw you stream, and I did not see the the final completion of the witch. How did that turn out? It was looking really good from what I had seen. Oh, you're on your way home. Okay, you probably won't be able to communicate. Uh, at the moment, because you're a little busy driving. Please focus on driving. Uh, Ashwin, on DS9, they had some neural compact complex pack lids. I think I, I, I still just reading that and saying that word. It just it just it just uh, it just sets me off. I don't know if uh, <laughs> I know it's fine, but I'm just like little pack lid. Ashwin, but TNG was the introduction to many species, and so they were simpler. Also, DS9 is abnormally complex for a sci-fi show in the 90s. Yeah, but if you talk to J. Michael Straczynski, he'll be all like, they copied my shit. Fuck DS9. It's all about, it's all about Babylon 5, guys. He's trying to make Babylon 5 a thing again. He's trying to get it to come back uh, unsuccessfully, I think. Um, truth be told, I'm not too familiar with Babylon 5. I probably watched the first season, uh, and I thought it was alright, but yeah, there's there's definitely a divide 
I feel like I feel like the, the, the fondness and the sentiment for Babylon 5 has, has faded in in time and 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 conversely the fondness for for DS9 has only kind of increased, wouldn't you say? Uh Jose, it's 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 great. Love that waifu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks really nice. Um Yeah, like I said, I, I had seen that model because uh, I was looking at color schemes for which witches, you know, and I was like, hey, isn't there like a witch model kit? Um, so I had seen some pictures of that model, and it looked really, really good. And there was that purple one, too, which looked really cool. I was like, I kind of want it. I kind of want it. But I can't actually find it anywhere because, I don't know, it came out like a few years ago. It's the thing about these models. It's also very much like Lego. In the world of Lego, you know, these model kits come out, and if you don't buy it within the first, you know, eight months to a year, or even less, sometimes models are only available for like a, a, two months or something. Like really, really hot models. Hot models. Uh, yeah, they're gone. You cannot... You're going to have to go to the secondary market or hope that they do a second printing. And so, yeah, like like model kits are very much like that, too, as, as I've come to understand. Ashwin, I can say Pakli because I'm a Indian person. Uh, hold on a moment, everyone. Give me a minute. Oh, my mic is off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I muted my mic. I had to I had to get it. Take a phone call here, guys. I was you know you know we're moving and shaking here. <laughs> Not really, but yeah, there was I got a phone call, so I just had to mute the mic for a sec. Uh, Ashwin, I tried Babylon Five, but I couldn't do it. It just never drew me in. Hmm. What are your thoughts on C Quest? What's your thoughts on C Quest? DS9 had that polish. Stanley's Earth is in the DC universe. Is known as Earth-6. Uh, oh, okay. Earth-6. Could they revisit that? Could they revisit that? That could be a thing. <laughs> you never knew that? Now you know. You know. Uh, I appreciate that you dropped that knowledge on us just now there, Ashwin. You never know. Like, that I could save a life. You know, I've held that gunpoint. I'm gonna blow this guy's head off if you don't tell me what Earth is Stan Lee's Earth within the DC universe. What number is it? What number is it? Uh, 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 six. Oh, you're lucky. You're lucky. You never know. Could come in handy. I'm gonna blow your fucking head off. What was the name of the movie that? What was the name of the 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 play that Batman watched? Was it a play or a movie? No, it was a movie. What was the name of the movie that that Batman watched as a child with his parents? I think that would be a very amusing. Um, a very amusing game show like it would have this kind of fictional layer on top and it would be called I'm gonna blow your fucking head off right and it's just like it's it's a game show but there's this this layer of it that's like you're gonna get your head blown off Mark of Zorro 
uh, that's cool that he has his own Earth. All the characters are so wild and weird looking. Yeah, like I think he made, I think he made Superman kind of like Cap, right? Like he wasn't, he wasn't an alien. I think. I remember that. It's it's Stan Lee's DC Universe as well as um. as well as uh, the Amalgam Universe. That was like peak, peak 90s comics for me where, where they were just so high off their own supply and they felt like they could do anything and, and the recession, or actually, yeah, I, I guess the bubble was already kind of blowing up, bursting, but at the same time, you know, they had to get these comics out. They had to get them out and, and they, trying all, all sorts of nonsense and I was like yeah Stan Lee let's get Stan Lee to create a, the DC universe I mean we already made the DC universe but what if Stan Lee just what if his brain was the one that did it all what if what if he was the one that made it all up and so they'd be all the same names but they'd actually look entirely different and have different lore that's gonna sell comics right oh yeah just print it print it here see gonna make boffo bucks oh yeah like what if the marvel universe and the dc universe combined and then all the heroes would be like a fusion of marvel and dc that's gonna sell right oh yeah it's gonna sell boffo bucks baby let's print it let's call up stan lee let's call up joe caseta see what he's up to <laughs> i don't know why they sound that way I don't know why they sound like Chicago gangsters. Spider Boy. Yeah. What was the Green Lantern one? I think it was a combination of Green Lantern and Silver Surfer? Was that it? What was that one? Oop, I may have sanded too much on that. What else? The one that sticks out to me was Doctor Strange Fate. That was the one where it was... On the surface, it sounds like, okay, it's a combination of Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate. That makes a lot of sense, right? But uh, you go through the comic, and it turns out that Doctor Strange Fate is simply just Professor X. He's not an amalgam amalgamation of anyone he's simply just professor x trying to do what he can do in the world for one reason or another i don't know i thought that was interesting because the whole the whole concept of of amalgam was that they were combinations combinations of of these characters but all except for all except for uh Doctor Strange Fate. He's just a naked, dark green dude. <laughs> really? A naked, dark green dude. But he surfs and he can create constructs, I guess. You know, it'll probably never happen, but if they ever revisited the whole amalgam thing, I think it would be fun. And if they leaned into the stupidity, I would enjoy it. Dude, his Shazam is just a monster. Oh, yeah. Uh, Stanley's Shazam. Interesting. A red Hulk like monster with spike. What the fuck? Okay. Well, you know, hey, it's Stanley. They were like, hey, it's gonna make money. It's Stanley. It's gonna make boffo bucks. Stan Lee. You know, not to get depressing or anything here, guys, but it's sort of like the, the sort of final year, few months, maybe even two years of Stan Lee's life was kind of a bummer, right? Like, like there was just like, uh, for lack of a better term, it seemed like there was just these vultures, like his own family and other people kind of just, just sort of like trying to 
make whatever money they could they could off of him whatever sort of like get into his will or i don't know it was, it was an ugly situation to be honest it, it wasn't it wasn't nice it wasn't good and and it did kind of call into question not only the last few years of of his life or months but rather even just the last several years of his of his life where he was just kind of he was involved in all of this stuff and it was like hey stanley makes manga you know there'd be like this japanese company and then they got him to do a whole manga thing and anime characters and then and then later it was like hey he makes a, he's making a video game same thing and it was like what's going on here i don't really feel like he's actually truly involved with any of this stuff they're just sticking his name on it it was it was uh, it wasn't good i didn't like it. it wasn't good and yeah he wasn't the saint but you know whatever i don't know. i don't know anyways um Eshwin, his Wonder Woman and Catwoman look like variations of the same fundamental character designs. Oh. What was the amalgam? What was the amalgam Wonder Woman? I think it was just. I think she was just called Amazon, right? And it was like Storm and 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 Wonder Woman together. I think that was it. It's kind of cool. I can get I can get with that. All right, all right. <laughs> I was I was tempted to look at the next page, see what we got, see what we got coming up next. It's a lot. It's doing a lot. Oh, I kind of wanted to put the human together. Shit, how are we doing for ten? Uh, how hard is this human? How hard How hard is this human? That sounds weird. Mm. Okay, we'll save it for next time. We'll save it for next time, because I have to clean the parts and make sure it's nice and good. Whew. What have we got? What have we done thus far? We've got these legs, which are not fully assembled. I will probably go in and glue them. But yeah, we did the little foot, the little feet. Little hobbit feet. Let's see. Can we put this? Yeah, they, these do need to be glued. Let's see here. Very interesting model, very different than, than your typical Gundam. Um, but also not all that different. It's, you know, the process is, you know, still kind of, kind of similar, kind of, kind of. Raichil builds, how's it going? Yeah, we're just about to wrap things up today. There's just generally the foot here. I've got the, the I'm building a, I am building a machining figure model kit. Do I have the... There you go. This uh, this is like an example of, of the model right here. The illustration. Uh, Eshwin, Scooby-Doo Batman is an ongoing series at DC. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. How many issues are out? Because I'm trying to find them, and it's I'm having difficulty finding that shit. <laughs> and now I want to find the Looney Tunes one. Remember, I was telling you about the Looney Tunes. I'll send you, I'll send you a a a, a picture of a, of of that comic. Because uh, that I was convinced I was like, holy crap, this looks awesome. But I think I'm going to wrap things up, everyone. So if you made it this far, I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for Purple for the sub. And thanks, everyone, for hanging out. We've got a number of people that came through and and used the blurp sound alert thingies, which is very humorous to me. 